Guys, Dom here from Cringy Dad Gaming. So we're just taking a sneaky look at Bacchus Studios' early access game, which is called Trident's Wake. This is a top-down twin-stick shooter, currently available on Steam for just under eight pounds. It's got a little bit of a sale on it at the moment. So we do have the option to be able to play online, where you can play with uh, four people total, so yourself and three others if you want. But we're just going to look at. A local game at this point just for this video I'm not gonna go in depth with anything here just uh, cover uh, off a few things about the game that I've picked up so far and uh, see how it plays really so this is not a review it is just a casual look at the game I am playing this on a controller and you can see that you can use mouse and keyboard but when I tried mouse and keyboard I did find that it didn't quite feel right. A twin stick shooter should be played with twin sticks in my opinion, at least that's how I like to play them. The game does remind me a little bit of Helldivers, if you've not played that game look into it. It was a game on PS4 released by Sony Computer Entertainment. Very similar or almost the same fonts and the kind of colouring, the sound effects, just some of the mechanics in the game are very similar. It wouldn't surprise me if either the studio had taken influence from that game or if someone or people on the development team might have also worked on that game and that's just their thing, their style. So the sound effects are good, nice and punchy. They don't sound too synthetic. So because I'm recording this live, I've got to try and think, talk and play at the same time. It's really not my forte. So at this point we're out of ammo on the assault rifle or SMG, whatever it is. I'll just crack out our secondary which is this Judge shotgun that did the job, didn't it? Um, so let's switch back over to the assault rifle because in our utilities at the moment, we're carrying a device to overclock, which I think increases your damage, and then an ammo pack. So now we can just get some extra ammo. So notice around the character itself, it's got part of the hood there on the floor, which I think is quite clever. It leaves you with less clutter on the screen which is quite good uh, red bar self-expansion really that's health blue bar shield these three little dots here are almost like a mini stamina management system i personally would maybe to make it a little bit more understandable for most of us who maybe have played a lot of action and role-playing games stamina is usually listed or uh, shown in a green bar I personally would just like a green bar on that side if the developer was to put a green bar on that side. At the moment it's for the dash, as you can see one of those square dots is gone now, I've used one dash, two dashes and then three dashes is what you get to be able to dodge before you have to wait for it to then recharge. I'd actually like that maybe as three green boxes like the shield has three blue boxes but you know maybe the developers like it like that for some reason. I just think for people who have not maybe looked at that or picked up on it because they're too involved in the gameplay sometimes it's easy to kind of miss that and I've almost died a few times from actually realising that I'd used all my dashes and I've not been paying attention to how many I'd used so each level has a number of objectives before you then have to extract without dying. Some of these objectives will actually trigger for a number of enemies to come in. Some of them means you have to hold a certain area while fighting off some enemies and that just makes for then a, a greater challenge, which I liked. I do like me twin stick shooters and I've had a bit of 
time to be able to play some. Uh, I've been under the weather a little bit recently, so I've had a little bit of extra time to be able to sit down and to try and relax, play some of these games, which is quite cool. So we're currently playing the game on its max settings. Let's just, if we can try and hide in a corner without dying, go into, actually it doesn't let us, let's look at it here. Um, I'll show you the settings in a minute when we go up to the main menu, um, but I'm currently playing this on the max settings. At the moment it's running just over 30 frames per second. It's pretty steady, uh, which I'm happy with because I tried playing this on the lower settings to increase the frame rate. And yes, I was hitting over 60 frames per second, but I just found that the overall environments, the shadows and lighting, uh, everything like that was pretty grim and because of the way these characters move, they're quite robotic, I did actually find that I didn't really notice much difference. Usually when you play in a game and there's a lot of movement and a lot of particles on the screen and effects, you can usually notice uh, the frame rate difference from 30 to 60. In this particular game, I didn't actually really notice much difference. And with that in mind, and because it looks relatively smooth anyway, 30 frames per second I just thought you know what I'm just gonna leave it uh, at the max settings uh, and for this particular game I'd rather it look a little bit nicer than run a faster frame rate because I wasn't really getting much from that faster frame rate out of ammo all right so what we're going to do is we're just going to literally finish these guys off and then we'll back out to the menu i don't want this to be a mega long video i just wanted you guys to be able to have a, a, a casual look at the game uh, before any of you might have uh, picked it up if you're interested in you know seeing how it looked and played let's see if we can go one-on-one -on -one with the heavy Trying to avoid that uh, Gatling gun. Yeah. Sometimes you get a few of them and the guys with the shields as well and a load of the lackeys and it can be quite intense, which is pretty cool. All right, let's quit the mission then. And I'll just show you real quick in the options. So at the moment where shadow is very high, you do have the option to be able to take them down. I'm sure you guys are aware taking the shadows down and straight away will increase the frame rate, but I did find that that really impacted the quality of the, the way the look uh, the look of the game. Anti-aliasing, ambient occlusion, motion blur and grain, you take them all off. And to be honest with you, some of these off there, it's not so noticeable, but more noticeable is the graphics settings here. So I'm running it high at the moment. You can get away with medium and still looks all right in medium, but as soon as you go down to low, everything just looks really pasty. There's not any texture to anything. And you know, things just look pretty ugly, really. You can always, lower the screen resolutions there's quite a few different screen re resolutions in there but to be honest with you i think with this particular game i don't think it's necessarily going to be overly taxing on your um your computers so you should be able to play it pretty much on the highest settings and still have a decent experience so there you go there's just an early look at the game and don't forget to like comment and subscribe and if you've got any thoughts on this game uh, if you want to feed back anything to the developers then pop that in the comments and i'll catch you guys on another video thanks for watching you're ready for this yo who's the daddy